For almost a decade, I've worked on a single app. Uh, that app is Egghead.io. Uh, it's built on Rails. Uh, for a while, we were a straight-up Rails app using Bootstrap. Uh, we introduced some Angular JS back in the day. But as soon as React came out, uh, I frankly was, was pretty smitten, and, and I wanted to move to React. So we migrated to a system called React on Rails. And React on Rails is, is actually pretty cool. It runs uh, a Node.js server in the background. And it gives us server-side rendering, which gives us a lot of capabilities and, and extra performance and uh, really kind of a robust React experience. But it's not without its pitfalls. And if you've ever worked on an application for over five years, and, and I haven't, this is the first one I've worked on for a long time, where we started with Egghead was me doing a Rails tutorial. And I did the Rails tutorial and I launched Egghead and it took a couple of weeks. Uh, over the next months and years, I, I built it. Uh, in the first couple of years, it was mostly myself. Um, and then we, we brought in other developers and we built a team over that time. Uh, but if you've ever spent that much time with a single app, um, you'll notice that it, that it builds a lot of uh, debris. So you get uh, just a lot of layers of, of learning and trying things. And, um, you know, I'm not the, the best developer in the world by any means. Uh, I made a lot of choices that if I could go back and if I could rewind, I would, would undo those choices. Uh, but at the same time, it's really expensive to just like, oh, we're going to start over. We're going to do this again. And I think a lot of teams can do that if, you know, you, you, you're, you're maybe funded or, or you, just, you just have that, that kind of capacity. But for the most part at Egghead, we're really focused on, on content generation more than development. That's, that's what we do. That said, um, recently we decided it's time for a fresh start. And kind of the things that are pushing us to this fresh start are uh, CSS and JS and and. We're not trying to get to CSS and JS. When I say this, what I mean is we've literally tried every single approach that you can do with React and CSS. We've done CSS modules. Um, we've done CSS in JS uh, in, in several different ways. We've tried uh, different systems, different libraries. Uh, we've finally kind of landed on Emotion and uh, in Egghead, in the, the Rails application that we're using, uh, we're using Tachyons, which has been really fantastic. Um, but We've also been using uh, other ways to approach this in other apps. We build, uh, we build and maintain other sites outside of our, our personal blog spaces. We, we also build uh, Epic React and just JavaScript uh, and several other uh, sites that we maintain for clients um, and instructors that you, you may have, have visited. Another thing that, that we run into is performance. And while React on Rails is pretty fantastic, there's some performance issues and we have to really bulk up on our uh, uh, Heroku servers to handle these performance issues. And, and that's fine, we do that, that's an investment. But we know it could be better. We've, we've kind of seen the light on the, uh, at the end of the tunnel and know that, that this performance could be better and we could, we could do better and we could you know, have a more accessible, more performant website uh, if we, we had a fresh start. Build times is absolutely huge for us. Uh, currently, from, from uh, pushing to GitHub and the PR being accepted, uh, a build takes about 25 minutes. And, and the reason it takes that long is it's, it's building, it's doing the whole front end, it's doing the bundling, uh, it's building Rails, it's pushing that to Heroku, it's running a bunch of tests, uh, and the back end tests are running, and, and you know there's 1,500 tests that run. And all of that's associated if I want to make a simple UI change. And it's a monolith, and there's some advantages to that. Uh, but for us, those build times are, are really really kind of excruciating and they they make it to where we almost don't want to make ui changes sometimes you get up in the morning and you're like what, what am i going to do today and and it's it really kind of affects your ability uh to work which leads to the idea of developer experience and this one is is again very huge for us and and you know when you don't want to work on your app because it's just it's just not there it isn't it isn't you know like like getting somebody into the application and, and uh, doing the, the, the very long checklist it takes to like get the back end up and running just so they can work on, on the UI or make a change, um, that's really kind of, of challenging for us. Uh, another aspect of this, and this is kind of the layers, um, much like CSS in JS, 
we have tried almost every state management approach you can possibly do in React. Uh, currently, it's MobX, and that's been pretty nice, and we enjoy that. It gives us dependency injection. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we love modern state management in React and using things like React Query uh, and, and frankly, the hooks and, and other things that React has given us. So we end up right now in our application, we have hundreds of components um, and, and most of them are, are class-based and, and to migrate those over to hooks based and we, we could we could do it piecemeal it would just be a really big effort and we'd be like dealing with all the the kind of the debris of our, our choices that we made over the years uh, so that's where a fresh start really makes sense for, for us when we sat down and we started thinking about this there are so many choices they you know you can go in and when you're thinking about javascript and you're thinking about your new project there are so many different ways you can approach your application one thing we knew for sure is that we absolutely love and adore React. Uh, we, we are all in on React. We think it's fantastic. Uh, we didn't at any point think, hey, should we try something else? Should we migrate away from React? We're going to be with React for, for years to come. I think it's going to be a, a viable and great choice um, for a long time. At the top of our list is Gatsby. We've used Gatsby and, and really have enjoyed it uh, while we used it. But Gatsby has some drawbacks, and those drawbacks are it's uh, a static site generator, and static site generators are fantastic. But for us, we have uh, you know thousands of lessons, and we we've actually tried Gatsby, and we we built Gatsby. My my personal uh, blog is currently Gatsby. Um, Epic React is built on Gatsby. Uh, testing JavaScript is built on Gatsby. These are sites that we work with and, and we uh, have, have used and enjoyed Gatsby. Uh, and probably one of the biggest drawbacks for us was that the, the constant need to do static site generation was um, really frankly time consuming. And that gets back to the, to the build times. And, and it really, you know, it's aggravating uh, when you have to do that. And I, I, one of the things I absolutely love about Gatsby is the way uh, that they kind of uh, came up with a, a fairly revolutionary way to like load your data in and do the content web. And I, and I really love that and, and miss it when I'm not working uh, with Gatsby. Another option was to build something fully custom, like just to start Greenfield and, and build something uh, from scratch or use something uh, bleeding edge um, or something even on the horizon. We are very excited about Remix, uh, which is, is currently uh, about to come out in, a, in its beta form and is, is a new project um, from Michael Jackson and Ryan Florence. Uh, but for us, we want to make the change now. We started doing this uh, this summer, and you know we're months into this. We did a proof of concept, um, and for us, it, you know, like like something bleeding edge wouldn't work. Uh, something fully custom wouldn't work for us either because uh, just the the nature of our team. You know, we're still focused on content. We don't have, uh, we're not a huge development shop. We don't have a lot of developers. So going full custom really wasn't in in our range. So we uh, decided to go completely all in with Next.js for our front end. And this was a big decision for us for a long time. We kind of avoided this, didn't want to do it. Uh, Next.js is, is frankly a little bit bossy and it, it has a particular way that they expect you to build websites. And, you know, like I fought that as a developer, I think, oh, I'm just not going to, you know, I, I can't have somebody tell me how to do it. I, I you know, my decisions are um, uh, important. I don't, you know, want to like have those decisions made for me, which to me is actually kind of funny because of being like a Rails developer and looking back and thinking about Next.js and Rails, it's like, wow, they've really provided me those, those Rails and those guides that, that allowed me to be successful in the first place was you know kind of following uh, the Rails way. And, and Next.js reminds me of that experience in, in many ways. Next.js is mature. Next.js is robust. We get the best of both worlds with static site generation and server-side rendering, and we're taking full advantage of this. We take full advantage of uh, server-side rendering, and now when I don't have that, I really miss it. It's really difficult for me to be in a purely static site uh, at this point in time because I'm, I'm kind of spoiled, frankly. When we use Next.js on Vercel, we get best practices for free. 
we let Vercel tell us how to build our app. We get uh, edge distribution. Uh, we get very good caching. There's no no problems or issues. And it's not that you can't take Next.js and, and apply it someplace else. You can deploy it to AWS. You can do do all sorts of things. But we were uh, made the decision to just go in with Vercel and and um, do what they have kind of prescribed uh, that we do. And that's their business model. But for us, it really actually works out. And, and uh, cost-wise, at the end of the day, when we're all done with this, we're actually going to greatly reduce our, our, our server costs uh, because, frankly, Heroku is kind of expensive uh, the way that we're, we're using it right now. There was also some bonuses that I didn't expect when I, when I came into this. File system routing is so easy to think about, and I absolutely adore it. And it's very clever and very well done and, frankly, just works. And, and it's uh, amazing for us. TypeScript was another thing. When we first started this, we didn't go with TypeScript. Uh, now that we've gone with TypeScript, I miss it every single moment that I'm in, an, in a project that is not using TypeScript. It is wonderful. For us, we went strict mode, no implicit any, and we went all in on TypeScript with this. We're letting the tools do the work. There is a learning curve. Uh, type systems are type systems, and there was some work involved with, with getting that done, but it is absolutely worth it. The other thing, and I'm probably most excited about this, is that we are working in the open. We're, we've made this project open. The source is available and, and free to look at. Uh, you can follow our progress. It's all up on GitHub if you want to check it out. Uh, Egghead.io is our account. The project is Egghead Next. And we're extremely excited to show this to you and participate with you and our broader community and kind of demonstrate how to build kind of a big real-world app using Next.js.